is a Sender 95, one of the senders that were installed in 1963. It's uh, brother next door, Sender 93 was the prototype. We're going to have a look at that one in a moment with all the doors open. But first, just to give you an impression of the three units here that make a 250 kilowatt shortwave sender, let's just have a look at the first one. This is the main RF unit, radio frequency unit. Metering on the front, handles on the front for manual tuning. These centers are manually operated and manually tuned. Comprehensive metering here of what we need to see when you're using a broadcast transmitter. In a little while we'll switch this on and you'll be able to see it all work. But just to look at it cold, we've got unbalanced power, penultimate anode current, we'll look at that. VSWR, a term with which many of you will be familiar. Final anode current, balanced power for the output. Then you've got the metering of the four tubes or the four valves in the transmitter. There's a pen RF stage here and a final RF stage here. Power comes in at about uh, five kilowatts. We generate five kilowatts of carrier and feed it to these pen tubes. They're grounded grid, so very stable. We tune the anode with the white handles. We tune the cathodes of the next stage, the final stage, with the green handles. And we tune the output anode circuit of the final stage with the orange handles. We can alter the power that goes up and down. Sorry, we can alter the power that goes out to the array by up and down by the two knobs there. And there's metering of various voltages on the, on the filaments of the tubes. That's the RF section. I've told you about we need five kilowatts of drive. Mark Emmys were always very savvy. If they wanted five kilowatts, they'd see what they got in their shop. And what they had was a five kilowatt amplifier. This is the H1100. Absolutely bog standard RF amplifier, much used by the military. One tube in the output, a wideband valve amplifier, and now a synthesizer from which we can generate the frequencies that we need. This one you can see is set to 13.7 megahertz. Manually operated, tuned, tune and load, plate tune, plate load, quite standard, standard design. As I say, up to five kilowatts out. This unit was available in various versions of AM. You could have an amplitude modulator with it if you wished. You could have it frequency shift keyed. You could CW it, as we do here. Or you could use it on FM with various options. But obviously this was the basic carrier only five kilowatt option. So that's the H1100 air cooled. Let's go through and look at the other bit. The RF section, as you know, generates 250 kilowatts of carrier. To become a broadcast station, though, you do need something more than that. Uh, you do need modulation. You do need program input on the carrier. This is the modulator, high level, class B. So you're looking at a valve modulator here to generate about 180,000 watts of audio. I'll say that again, 180,000 watts of audio. They take the... Um, the advantage here of using the R of the away from the RF to make the modulator the control department where you can switch the sender on and off, you can meet to various voltages, as well as being an audio amplifier. In addition, we've removed the cathode ray oscilloscope that was used for waveform monitoring and replaced it with the industry standard Orban HF processing unit. Within here are the settings that are required to make it punchy audio and to give the, uh, give the sound that, that, that we want on shortwave to break through the interference and static etc. So that's the Orban HF. 